Welcome to Soap, Oils and Herbs. My name is Irene. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm excited today. We are going to be doing glycerine soap from scratch with no alcohol. It's a basic recipe that works so well and is so easy. So let's get right into it. You can so long get yourself a slow cooker. And as I go along, I'll explain to you the ingredients. All the ingredients will be in the description below and the formulation so you can change it as you want. So I used 100% cold pressed virgin coconut oil. And um, I think this also would contribute to the opaque color of the um, end product. Um, you're not going to get a super clear glycerine soap, but you're going to get a beautiful glycerine soap. And that's what we want. So I've added 180 grams of coconut um, oil and then 55 grams of stearic acid. And we are going to let that melt gently in your um, slow cooker and um, until everything is melted clearly and you've got a clear liquid. So while that's busy melting, you are going to so long mix your lye solution, which is 40 grams of your sodium hydroxide with 89 grams of water. Please be so careful when you mix um, your lye solution, wear gloves, wear um, um, safety glasses just to keep yourself safe. So once your oils have melted and they've reached about a temperature of 75, 80 degrees Celsius, try to keep them both, both the oil and the lye solution more or less the same temperature. Um, don't get your oils too hot. Um, I find when the oils are too hot, your, um, your soap tends to sweat a bit more. So get them to a nice temperature between 75 degrees um, and um, your lye solution more or less the same. You can see I'm just testing it just to make sure that it is right. Move your thermometer um, around the, the, the slow cooker. Don't let it touch the bottom of your slow cooker because um, you want an accurate reading. And when you feel that your temperatures are at the right, um, your product, uh, not your product, your solution and your oils are at the right temperature, we can then put it together. So there, I think I'm busy temperature. It's about 73 degrees, so that seems to be just right. So you can so long get your blender ready. And we are then going to pour your lye solution into your oil, your oils, and you're going to see it's going to start up already getting nice and thick. And you're going to give that a nice blend until it is well incorporated and you get this nice thick, thick wet paste, if that makes sense. It's, it's a nice thick paste. And you can just clean everything off. Take everything off your blender. Don't waste any of that awesome product. And then just spread everything evenly in your slow cooker that it can get heat right through all the coconut oil and lye solution. Because you want to basically cook out that lye and start getting your soapification going. So we are going to let that sit in the slow cooker so that it, it can start forming a kind of like a gel. That's when you kind of get the soap producing, if you would like to call it that way. So that can take anything from about um, an hour to two hours. Make sure that it really gets to that gel stage that it's properly cooked through and no more of the lye solution left over. Great, so we are now at the gelling stage. So your coconut oil has become nice and translucent. It's um, nice and soft. You can definitely see it has gotten to that gel stage. Scrape all the sides, make sure that all the um, coconut oil is well cooked and everything is blended well. You don't want having bits and pieces of uncooked soap. So make sure to blend it very well and evenly at the base of the, um, of the pot. All 
we're going to be adding now our other ingredients which is uh, 250 grams of propylene glycol 140 grams of glycerine and 250 grams of your sugar solution or sorbitol. This is a blend of 166 grams of sugar and 83 grams of water. Now you will have noticed that um, the coconut oil has kind of hardened up. Um, the ingredients that I added were at room temperature so it obviously made the coconut um, kind of get hard. So I've just taken a blender and I have uh, blended it so that I can break up all the pieces that everything can be combined. A quick solution for this, you could place your propylene glycol and your glycerine with your sorbitol solution um, together and warm it up on um, in a pot on a stove to get it to a higher temperature that you don't have to have um, that happening. It won't affect the end result, you will still have a beautiful glycerine soap. So we're just going to keep on stirring, make sure that everything is well blended and um, mixed well. And we're going to let that cook for, it can take anything from 45 minutes to 2 hours. All depends on your, um, your temperature. So just leave that covered to cook and check it now and again and give it a stir. Make sure that everything is um, evenly uh, blended, that your sides are nice and clean. And um, yeah, we'll wait until it becomes clearer. So about an hour later when we come back, we see that it's definitely starting to get clearer. Our solution has um, got a clearer almost transparent appearance and everything is melting well and there are just some pieces of um, coconut oil on the top that um, just needs to melt. So we'll just let that carry on cooking for a bit longer. There it's just a little bit more clearer. There are some pieces there at the bottom. We'll just leave it there for a few more minutes. While that is busy carrying on cooking, I've so long put a Pyrex jug in a, a pot of water so that it can warm up a bit. So when I pour the um, the coconut oil into the Pyrex dish, it doesn't harden up because if the Pyrex dish is cold, it's going to create a film on the sides of the Pyrex dish. So warm up a Pyrex dish in a pot of uh, water so that it can be um, the same temperature as your coconut oil. Great, so our glycerine soap is ready to pour. So I'm gonna pour it into the warmed Pyrex jug. Get everything in there and pour it in into the silicone molds. Just a tip, put your silicone mold onto a tray because they are a bit wobbly. I didn't do it there um, and when I tried to put it on a tray, it messed a bit. So put it on a tray so that when you lift it up, it doesn't wobble and mess. I'm super happy, it's clear, everything has dissolved nicely, that's just how you want it. There is my PVC mold, these molds are available online and um, yeah, they come out beautifully um, shiny when you take them out the mold. So this made about a three and a half cups of um, glycerine. I didn't actually measure the final amount, but um, about three and a half cups of glycerine.
So great, we are unmolding now. They have set, they have um, sat for about two and a half hours and they are nice and hard. So you will have seen that they are no longer super clear like when I first poured it. They have now set and they are kind of like a milky opaque color. You can see I put it against the books there. You can see through, but you must remember they are um, still fresh. They've only sat for about an hour or two. The longer they stay, they do become more milky. Um, and that's fine. I wasn't really going for the super clear glycerine. That is why they add the um, solvent of alcohol um, in it to make it super clear. But we are obviously not doing that. So I'm going to just quickly melt one of the um, soaps um, in a jug of hot... Um, oh, put it in a jug with some uh, a pot of hot water just to melt it quickly. I want to color the solution with some mica. Um, some pink mica just a little bit you can see I really didn't add that much um, I didn't measure it so I just um, put it in just to see um, how it will take when the solution cooled down a little bit I added some patchouli essential oil um, just to give it um, some scent I just wanted to see how it was going to react It blended quite well. I was very happy with that. Great, so I just quickly did a quick test just to see how it lathers and how it feels on my skin. Um, remember the soap is only a few hours old. I had just made it, um, but I was very happy with the results. It was foaming, it was cleaning, it was gentle on my skin. I didn't feel it drying or have any kind of acidic feel on my skin. My skin wasn't pulling, so I was quite happy with that result. I also decided to test the pH to make sure that it is at a, a, a safe pH. Um, I just wet the soap gently, tried it with the pH strip and it was between um, a 9 or a 8 or a 9, 9, 10 around there. Um, and I think that is that is good. I'm going to let it rest for a while um, so that all the light can completely get out the soap and it would be a bit more mild on my skin. Um, yeah, and that was great. Oh, I hope you enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe. Let me know if you've tried it. And um, have an awesome Love It Handmade Day. Thank you. Bye-bye.